Angela Bull. I'm the CEO of the Independent Book Publishers Association, and I'm here at BookCon 2017 in New York City, talking with a number of amazing IBPA members and their authors about books that are coming out now, that have come out before, and that are just great reads. Today I'm here with Michael Kep. Hi, Michael. Hi, Angela. Michael is the author of a series of books out from Will Dreamly Arts. Uh, it's a trilogy, actually. His first two books are out now. His third one will be out later. The first one is called Invasion of Heaven. The second is Leaves of Fire. The third we're just in the middle of. So I have a title. And the title is? The Shape of Rain. The Shape of Rain. That'll so excited. 2018. 2018. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic psychological thriller. Michael's going to tell us a little bit about it. It has a pragmatic psychologist as the, as the uh, protagonist. That's so right. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, it's the story of a painter, a portrait painter, and a, a psychologist. And the painter uh, has a supernatural element to his paintings that make them dangerous to look upon dangerous to the point of death. Um, it goes from the mountain lakes of North Idaho over to Italy and back. It's got international intrigue. It's got a little bit of mafia, art curation, uh, very much about storytelling and about mythology, um, very much about art. Uh, it's a murder mystery and a love story. And there's even a sword fight. Because I don't, I don't think that, well, I don't think that there should be a book ever written that doesn't have a sword fight. That's just me. Yeah, that's but. Fair. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that because I'm looking for my next big book that has a sword fight in it. So well, there you go. There, there's plenty of it for you. Plenty in there. So th I do want to actually, uh, in a minute, talk about some of the themes. To get a oh, sure. Bit more yeah, yeah, you bet, you bet. Fun. But what inspired you to write this book? So um, you didn't mention it, but I, I know you a little bit. And you, you know, I think... You're a it, renaissance man, right? You do tons of things. How do you find time to write books as well? And what inspired oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, three things I think really influenced it. Um, one, being nine years old and seeing Star Wars for the first time. That was a big one. That changed my whole world. Um, um, music was a huge inspiration for it too. And I, but I think lastly um, was my mom, honestly. Um, uh, when I, uh, growing up, my mom suffered from, or still does to some degree, uh, uh, depression and anxiety. And, you know, growing up and watching that, it's really tough. It's tough to watch that. You don't understand it. You can't understand why suddenly she's emotional or she's dealing with depression. It's sad. It's, it's, hard. it's hard to get your head around. Um, so growing up, I, I decided that wouldn't it be cool to create a kind of superhero, not with a cape, but a superhero out of a psychologist um, and look at the cure to depression and the cure to suffering as art and um, have the psychologist have a way to tap into that. And I think that was one of the primary things. The first book is dedicated to my mom uh, for that. Um, uh, uh, and it, obviously the, it turns into a much larger tale, but that was one of the very first things, yeah. So and there is, moms there is, have a way of doing that to you. Moms are amazing, you know? yeah, and they will, <laughs> they'll help you. They do. Um, so you, you mentioned art, I know that's a, art plays a huge role in this book. Um, there's a lot of ways in which you can play that out. What other themes or what other things kind of pull forth from this book? What are you working with here um, that would be interesting for readers to kind of dive into? I got so uh, intrigued with the idea of what, of just storytelling, what stories do. How many stories that you tell every day? How many stories have you heard actually with this microphone today? All day long, right? But that's all we're made of, our stories. And it, and it seems to me sometimes that we forget. You know, we forget, you know, well, I, I went over to the store today and I bought myself a, you know, a burrito and a, a thing of Gatorade and I walked down the street and I'm telling you a story. And I, but th those stories, you know, really define us and the pictures that we create in people's minds. And that is a central theme in the book where uh, our psychologist, his name is Locke Neuwirth, um, is trying to capture a murderer and his, this murderer, oh, I should give away the story, but... Oh, but everything this, but the final twist, that's fine, this yeah. This murderer, he has a, an enormous amount of respect for and decides that the only way to do it is to tell a story and spin a tale with, that seems so fantastic that it's true and it becomes true. And fascinated with the way stories change our behavior, you know, especially in this day and age when you can be told that, you know, black is black and white is white, or black is white, and we're going to believe whatever we're told. All the alternative facts. So 
So storytelling. Uh, storytelling. Comes through as a, as a strong theme in this book. I did notice that too. Another thing yeah. that um, we've already called out, but I thought was really prevalent again is this art. Right? Yes. So you're bringing this through in a lot of different ways, and you do it interestingly. Pictures influence behavior. Um, yes. Journals, words create real people out of the writer's mind. So there's this kind of magical realism. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Uh, why is what does this mean to you? Why? What role does art play in our lives? Why is it so important in these novels that there's so much play with art? God, that's a great question. That's my favorite question all day. Yeah. Um, my goodness, um, art. It, it, to me, is is life. I mean, um, and I, I hope that doesn't sound too terribly trite, but. Truly, um, every day is about trying to imitate this really inexplicable thing called life, and and I'm every day I'm trying to figure out a different way to recreate it and try to put it in front of somebody else and elevate them in some way. Um, uh, paintings. Uh, I'm also a painter. Um, when someone is able to put oil on canvas and create an image that inspires you or elevates you, I can't think of anything more amazing. Or a sunset, that's a different kind of painting, of course, a much more universe-based hand is doing it, of course, but um, yeah, the imitation of nature, uh, it, to me, it's everything. And, and in this book, um, Locke senses that. Uh, this psychologist realizes that if there is a way to uh, curb or try to end misery and suffering in his clients is to provide them with art. It's probably the only, it's the best medication problem, right? It is, it is very good medication. I like to think so. I get lost in the writing, between. As is reading, as is the empathy that's created in a, um, you know, by really identifying with a character. I love the idea of a um, psychologist superhero. Yeah. Uh, they're using art to help people deal with whatever demons or issues that they have. I think that that's really clever. That's perfect. And it comes across really well in these two books. Um, again, Invasion of Heaven uh, it came out in paperback last year in 2016. Leaves of Fire just came out. So yeah, uh, actually, Leaves of Fire comes out the 23rd oh, the of July. July. Yeah, July. 23rd of July. July That's right. July 2017, so yeah. we're almost there. Almost there. And we're going to be waiting for that third book, which will come out next year. These have been compared to Dan Brown. I know that's something. Wow. Say, right? like, Isn't that exciting, that's though? Very wow. Exciting thing to say. He's, he's, he's pretty good. He's been known to write <laughs> he, does, he does some pretty interesting work. I don't know. I, he's so amazing. I also think it's very. Standish, if you will. So it's a very much like Stephen King's The Stand. It's epic. There's a there was a funny review that we got that if uh, if The Stand and The Da Vinci Code had a baby, this which would be it. I guess so. I, right. but I that that's an interesting picture of those two books sort of mating. I wonder what that would look like. I don't know if that would be. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, we we know these books are available. They're available at Amazon. They're available Barnes and Noble. Anywhere that you get books, you can get this book. Uh, if you're looking at it from the book market perspective, it's distributed by Ingram and by Bookmasters, so you can get it that way as well. I'm very excited about it. I can't wait till the third one. Well, thank you. I can't wait too. Uh, 2018? 2018. Yeah, we're looking at. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks for spending time with me, Angela. Appreciate it.